everybody Ann here sitting here on my porch having my coffee with all of you again and it's another beautiful sunny day so this is gonna be a good day I can feel it and so I'm sitting here reading all of your comments from my video yesterday the one about making the rudimentary solar panels and explaining the story about the visitor <laughs> and you know it just lifted my spirits it really did I think my spirits have been a little bit low lately and um, and when my spirits are low my energy goes down and whatnot so reading your comments of support and advice just oh gosh it made me feel so good and I'm gonna take all of your suggestions all of them um, one by one I'm gonna accomplish all of that I mean I do I do want a weapon I do want cameras I oh the sign at the end of the road, the uh, chain, I actually have a chain I could pull across. And um, I don't know if you watched uh, many videos back where I kind of flipped out because I had just had my gravel poured and somebody was pulling up on the, the wet part, the soggy part of the culvert area and was damaging the fresh gravel before it could set. So I put a I put the chain that was already there across, so I've got posts, I've got the chain, I've got the posted sign. All I need to do is get a beware of uh, dog sign and preferably beware of pit bull dog sign. Um, so I am going to pull that chain every night, every single night, and hopefully that will keep people from thinking they can pull up my drive. So that's a great suggestion and I can, it's already something I have. Um, I do want to get a weapon. Um, bear spray might be good and I will never open my door again to anybody at night and definitely not s step outside so uh, I'd like to get some cameras up and whatnot I think I'm gonna be okay I went over and talked to mr. Lucas about it yesterday and he saw he didn't see the individual pull up last night but he saw somebody pull up to my next door neighbors and he described the woman that I saw perfectly so I think it is the same woman and so she's she's been next door so he's gonna watch out for me he always does he watches everything that goes on if he's not out back sitting by his man cave or you know pulling it off to the side in the chairs in the shade where he and I sit and talk quite a bit he's inside looking out his window so he watches everything and nothing escapes him so you know anybody out there thinking about coming up in here <laughs> and bothering me Mr. Lucas is kind of no so um, it feels good to know that there's somebody watching out for me so today well um, I need to rack the wine in fact I needed to do that a few days ago so I get to use my new siphon thing for the first time um, what else? I am going to, oh, that, um, sauerkraut that I made is so good. So I need to kind of put some of that in some other jars and whatnot and, and put it in my fridge. And, um, I decided, you know what? I am going to pull the bucket garden up by the tiny house. There's plenty of sun up here and it will make it easier to water. Um, I'll still have to haul water down to the beds to water them, but it'll be much less work. And um, the good thing about keeping them up here is a lovely, lovely subscriber of mine sent me a big, long 50-foot hose. And that is plenty enough to get to water all of the plants on the side of the tiny house. Um, I'd have to fill up a little jug or something to do the, the herbs and whatnot in front. But um, all I have to do is turn on the spigot and it flows just forcefully enough to be able to water the plants but not too much to where it's like just totally power washing them basically so um, that's great it's the first time I've actually tried it I didn't even think of pulling it over to use uh, to water the plants because I didn't think it would work but it does it works great so I'm gonna pull the plants up here I don't know what else I'm gonna do today but um, I'm feeling I'm feeling better today so that's good well, I don't know guys, let's, let's just get this day going. Let's just rack this wine. I've got everything set up right in front of me. Everything has been sanitized with one step that I'm gonna be using. There's a little thing up there that I'm um, setting the bung on top of that's also sanitized. And I'm gonna use my siphon for the very first time. So, all you gotta do is, once I get it untangled, <laughs> 
get it down into the bottle. And it's got a little clamp on it that is adjustable. You can adjust the height of the part that goes into the gallon jug. You just adjust it to whatever height you want. And then just kind of push it down a little bit. May take some finagling. And I'm just looking down. I want it just above the level of the sediment. And then just put the other end into the gallon jug. There you go. Oops, I forgot I still had some sanitizer in the bottom of that. I mean, I could leave it in, but there's no sense in, in leaving it in, uh, taking up space. So I dumped it out, and it is no rinse, so you don't have to worry about rinsing it. And then you just give the part on the top a couple of little pumps. Once you have it set like you want it to. And then it will start emptying. And you put the, the full jug up higher. That'll help it. And I by no means am an, am an expert at doing all this stuff. Um, and this is the first time I've used a siphon. so, But it's pretty easy. And normally what I used to do, I would just put a funnel on top of the empty one and just uh, put some cheesecloth down there and then strain the, you know, the raisins or whatever out of it. But this is going to be much better. You'll see. It is very, very easy and it's working perfectly. I can't believe I'm doing this my first time. Yay! And then you just got to wait until you've got all out that you want to come out. <laughs> la, 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 la. I need to taste some of this too. I can't wait to see what it tastes like. It's basically finished fermenting and um, it stopped bubbling and lots of stuff has settled. Now I'm watching it real close here because I don't want it to start sucking up the, the raisins. So I think I'm just going to push it down just a little bit more. And yes, during this process, you will lose a little bit of the wine. But you, don't re you really don't want, you know, you don't want the sediment in the bottom. But you'll see what I do to kind of compensate for that later. I'm just going to push it down just a little bit more. I may get some of the dead yeast into the new bottle, but that's okay. We'll rack it again the next time. Just about done. Yep, there we go. All right, then you just take it out, and I'm letting the rest of the uh, what's in the tube go into the bottle. And we're done. Just take your tube out, and this little uh, siphon thing has a little uh, hook that you can put it on. And yeah, not the best putting the tubing on the ground, but I'm going to sanitize everything again. All right, now it's time to take a little taste test. Let's see what it tastes like. Just a tiny one. I don't have a proper wine glass. That's so funny. I'm going to taste it a little bit. And you know what? This wine tastes great. It's a little dry because I use champagne yeast, but it is very boozy. Right on. Okay, next I'm going to pour in a little bit more apple juice that another wonderful subscriber sent me to top it off. And this is going to have a few more sugars in it, so I won't be surprised if it starts fermenting again, if there's any yeast that's still in there that's alive. And I'm going to fill it up pretty darn far. Not completely up the neck. Just in case it starts fermenting again, I don't want it to start bubbling up. I don't think it's going to do that because I think it's pretty much done. And during this stage, you want to avoid as much oxygen as possible. In the beginning, yes, you want it because it's fermenting, but now this is the, I guess they call it anaerobic part of it, whatever. Just fill it up quite a bit there. 
and then I've re-sanitized the bung and you just put it down in there and that's it folks well I was out moving the buckets and the cardboard from down by the street and look what I found underneath I grabbed them as quick as I could and you know where I'm putting them yep I'm putting them in the warm bin oh look at that my goodness and look at this big huge one right here look at how big it is Oh my goodness, this worm bin is thriving. Ha oh, ha ha, I got ones crawling all over the place. So I hope you like your new worm, worm home, wormies. I brought my buckets back up here, and that is the big jalapeno, giant jalapeno, uh, cayenne, of course, the potatoes. That is the eggplant, Japanese eggplant, and look at that thing. Would you look at it? <laughs> And then the sweet red peppers, sweet green peppers, and the carrots. Now I'm going to be watching the sun to see how it moves around. And the good thing is, is if these look like they need more sun, I can move them in the sun. If they need less sun, I can move them out of the sun. So this is going to be easier for me to, you know, keep them watered. Because I can pull the hose all the way over from the water catchment system over to this area. And water all the plants up to about right here. I think. Um, so that's going to make it so much easier. Whew! Good thing I had that little wagon over there. Oh, that really simplified everything. What's for dinner on the rocket stove tonight? Well, I decided on lasagna. This is going to take forever. Mmm. Recipe forthcoming. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's all I got for you today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.